persevering under pressure. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I'm talking about perseverance. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contra contra contradictions excuse me, of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. That's Hebrews 12, chapter, verses 1 through 3. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hey, it's Father. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, it's been a glorious, prosperous year for us. We're coming down to another, another year, Lord, that you kept us safe and sound, Lord. Strength, health, Lord Jesus Christ. You just took care of us all through this year, Lord. Thank for those who are here right now, Lord, those who are on their way, Lord, give them trial and grace and mercy, Lord, because so many dangerous things out there on the road tonight, Lord, as people celebrate the coming of the new year, Lord. Let's give them safe passage right now, Lord. We just thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so kind to us, Lord. Better we give to ourselves, Lord. We just thank you for this, this night, Lord, Jesus Christ. We come to no other place we'd rather be, Lord, than the house of prayer, Lord Jesus Christ. The house of worship to bring in the close of one year to bring into uh, coming up a new year, Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. That you brought us through, Lord Jesus Christ. This is just sickness, Lord Jesus Christ. You brought us out, Lord. Some of those those are in the hospital right now, Lord Jesus Christ. That's on the place which by this church prayer list, Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are sick and shut you take care of them right now, Lord. What you might be, Lord. Nursing homes or hospitals, Lord Jesus Christ. All men that may be affliction, Lord. Take care of them right now, Lord Jesus Christ. Cover them with your the blood. They would desire to be here, but cannot, Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you, Lord, for those who are here, Lord. No matter how many look around, might be few in number, but Lord, we, who you want to be are right here, Lord Jesus Christ. We come to worship you, and praise you, and honor you, Lord. For all you have done for us, Lord, continue to do for us, because you've been so kind, Lord Jesus Christ. Just thank you, Father, as you bless this, this, this service, Lord Jesus Christ, the best to again speak your Lord, as you bring the word, Lord Jesus Christ. Bless those who are in the kitchen, preparing the food, Lord Jesus Christ, yes. for nursing my body after this service, Lord. Just thank you for all that I hear, right? all that I assemble, none of my sound of my weak voice, Lord. Just thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do for us, Lord, and we ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, to be thy will, Lord. For me, thy will be seated in another year, Lord Jesus Christ, in a few couple hours, Lord. And we continue to do, always put you first, Lord. Always honor you and glorify and magnify you. Yes. Because you've been so good, you've been so kind, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the shepherd of this church, Lord, our pastor, Lord, to continue to strengthen him, Lord, for the, 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 the journey ahead, Lord Jesus Christ. You know it's a tough job, but you know you're preparing for it, Lord Jesus Christ. Just thank you, Lord. And all your blessings, yes, in your darling son, Jesus' name, Lord, we go for all this service, Lord Jesus Christ. And me too. Be to the glory and to the honor of you. Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.
person is designated to give the welcome, would you come forward? Well, I'm lucky it's my time, huh? <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Again, it's a great pleasure to uh, be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, and uh, under the guidance of our Pastor Reverend Ford, associate ministers, deacons, church members, and visitors, welcome to Grace First Baptist Church. And we will be holding our midnight service, welcoming in a new year. Because as we know, this past year has been up and down for some people. But we all made it this far. Amen. So giving all praises to God, uh, I'm thanking for myself first that uh, he gave me one more year on this side of the joy. Yeah. So as this program go on, we will have uh, Reverend, uh, Brother Hill coming forth. Good evening again, and uh, thank you all for being here uh, for Watch Night at Grace First Baptist Church. Uh, this year has been a tumultuous year, but it's been a good year for Grace. And all of those who are here and alive, it has been a great year Amen. at Grace. And we can only thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for every bit of it for every breath we took, for every child we saw being born, for all of those who were saved and joined Grace uh, First Baptist Church, and for all of those who were baptized during this year. So it has been a wonderful year. We've had weddings and, and some funerals and uh, other church events going on at Grace. And it happens every year, but... 2014 is a very special year, and it's special because we are all here and all a part of it. Uh, Grace is a, a, a new church for me. I've only been here for, I guess, about eight months now. I came from uh, another church uh, when I, uh, I got married to one of the members of Grace, and uh, uh, being a, a, a new husband and a happy husband uh, uh, and wanting to be close to her as often as I possibly could. And I sure didn't like driving uh, all that way instead of being right here with her. So 2014 has been a wonderful, wonderful year for me. And uh, I hope it has been wonderful for my wife. And uh, thank you for all the things that you have done for me and allowed me to work my way through and uh, understand it. And thank you most of all for bringing me to grace. And my testimony is just brief, and uh, but this is the time in our program when we'll allow you to come up and tell us about the wonderful things that Christ has done for you in the year 2014. Uh, we want you to uh, come up and share with us, because all we want to do is hear about the good graces of uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So uh, understand, uh, I know it might be a little threatening to you, to, to come up here, we'll have a mic down front. It's uh, Dickie Martin has it in his hand. And we want you to just raise your hand and come up. Uh, since, since we have a limited amount of time, we'd like for you to hold it to two minutes. But if it can't happen in two minutes, uh, take whatever time God tells you to take. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, Grace, for sharing uh, your blessings, sharing your gifts, sharing your grace. 
that God has bestowed on you. It is a wonderful thing that we can do when we are close to God. There's nothing we can't do when we are close to God. It is nothing better than being together, brethren, together, worshiping God. And on this watch night, which ends this year and is the beginning of the year to come, I will say to all of you, God bless you. We look forward to 2015 and beyond. We have done great things, and we have great things to do.
church. Praise the Lord. Glad to hear such loud voices tonight. And it's a good thing. I know some of you might be looking around and looking at the number. What I heard somebody say one time that we might count numbers, but God make numbers count. Amen. Amen. But at this time, it is offering time. So we're going to ask our officers and ushers to come forward, please.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Glad to see everybody out tonight. Um, it's not in the program, but I think it's um, fitting that we go before the throne of grace and ask the Lord to bless us not only this night, but to bless us as we go forward to 2015. Amen. And we know it's because of the Lord's mercies Amen. that we're not consumed. Amen. Those mercies are new, right? Amen. They're new every day. Why is that? Because God is faithful. Yes. And Jeremiah says, great is thy faithfulness. Yes. And so there's nothing, I think, more befitting than given the one who is so great to us. All the glory and all the honor for all that he has done in 2014. We went through trials and tribulations. Yes. Went through some heartache and pain. Yes. Lost some loved ones along the way. Yes. But through it all, the Lord kept yes. through it all. And I like that. That God, no matter what we do, and no matter how sometimes we put God on the back burner, He still keeps us. He's been better to us than we have could have ever been to ourselves. And so on a night, a night that we bring in a new year, as we make our way to the altar, whatever you have that you need to give to God, 2014, we need to leave that to all of you. Because we don't need to take such baggage with us in 2015. We need to have a clean slate. Because God wants us to grow through grace and be better in 2015 than we ever were in 2014. And it's not that we can't grow. But it is if we will grow. If we would grow, God would do the rest. And so we go in grace in 2015. That's our theme. Second Peter 3.18. We're going to press it into our minds. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. That's our aim, the glory of God, the glory of Christ. So as we prepare our hearts, we're going to ask Reverend Hall, who's been doing a lot of work, going to a lot of weddings, seeing a lot of things. I caught him off guard. <laughs> <laughs> but see, when you come to grace, you need to be prepared. <laughs> you, you prepared her. <laughs> I think it'd be fitting because if anybody wear their heart on their sleeve all the time, it's Reverend Hall. So I think he can close us out in prayer and open us up into a new year in prayer. Amen. Let us bow. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we bow before you tonight with humble minds and uplifted hearts. Lord, we come to you this evening getting ready to, to bring in this new year, but but as we do that, we just reflect, take one last look back over 2014. Lord, we remember where we were this time last year. We were, remember all of our hopes and resolution, our dreams. Lord, we also remember the struggles where our heart was this time last year. And Lord, over these 365 days, you've allowed us to see one more New Year's Eve. And Lord, we just say thank you. Lord, some of the dreams and resolutions and thoughts and hopes that we had last year, we accomplished a lot of those. And Lord, we couldn't have achieved what we achieved this year. We could not have accomplished what we accomplished this year without your hand moving in our lives. Without your hand moving around us and through us and within us. Lord, we thank you for everything that we achieved this past year. 
Lord, we didn't achieve everything. There's some things that were just a little bit out of our reach. Some things we just didn't have the strength or the resources or the, the push enough to quite get there. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to hunker down a little bit this year. To be re-encouraged, reinvigorated, so that we can push out and accomplish those things that I said that we meant to accomplish. But all along the way, Lord, things haven't always been happy. Things haven't always been great. We've lost a few more as Pastor Ford said. We suffered a little bit this past year. We struggled a little bit more than we had expected to this past year. We crawled a little bit more this past year. But Lord, we made it. Through it all, we made it. And we could not have made it, Heavenly Father. Sure, certainly without the friends and the family and the loved ones that were around us to encourage us and to pick us up and to, and to keep, uh, keep pushing us. But Lord, we could not have made it without you. And Lord, I'm so happy that through this entire year, we carried with us you. And some of those times, as the, the poem so often states, you carried us. You put us in your arms. You put us on your back. And you trust us through all the difficult times. So we just thank you for this past year. We look forward to this coming year. And Lord, we thank you for all those folks who are in our lives, our family, our friends, our spouses, our loved ones. Lord, we thank you for Grace First Baptist Church. You brought us through another year. You've grown us more every year. You've given us a pastor who continues to lead and, and guide as you would have him lead and guide. And Lord, we pray that you will give he and his wife strength to continue doing what they're doing, to follow your lead as we follow him. And Lord, this year, if there's somebody around us, if there's somebody here in this church who's not accepted you as their personal Savior, I pray that each one of us will be able to witness and to reach out, to touch those, and to tell all those who have not accepted you about a dying world and about your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for everybody's sins. All we have to do is accept it. Bless the service tonight. Bless the one who has come to bring us your word. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will hear him, listen to him, and carry on your word from here henceforth and forever. In your holy name we pray this evening.
to introduce our speaker. Amen. And a lot of you know our speaker, he's no stranger to Grace Church Baptist Church. He's been doing our watch night service for a while. So we so thankful the Lord has blessed us once again for him to come with his lovely wife and family to, to share what God has put on his heart to share with us. Now, I know y'all saw that he had this big bag. Don't try to figure out why I sent it. <laughs> he didn't share it with us when he came in the door. So don't ask us because we don't know. <laughs> so we're going to be surprised just like you guys are. And then probably if we did know, we wouldn't tell you. <laughs> but believe me, we were wondering back there, like, what is in that bag? But we know that the Lord has put some on his heart to be able to bless our hearts. Amen. He's a man of great character, a man of great knowledge. <laughs> A man who can take the word of God and make it plain, but yet give it to us in such a way that we can say, wow, I didn't know that. A man who can keep the audience captivated. Just with his voice. Not alone, not just the prop that he had, but just with his voice, right? Amen. If you ever hear him on 1480, you, you know who it is. Not that I'm just throwing a plug in for you. Amen. For the show. On 1480. <laughs> But he'd been in San Antonio a while, been a pastor of uh, Bethany, First Baptist Church, for, for, for over 30 some years. 34 to be exact. 34 years. Amen. 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 Hey, Greg, did y'all see me? <laughs> uh-uh. 34 years? Thanks, Doc. But I, I'll be all right. Whatever the Lord says, but but I, I don't want to prolong any, any any longer because I know He has something good to say to us, something good to share with us, something deep to open up to us, so that we can we can like, jump into the into the river, yet not drown. Amen. Now that's profound. And this is a man that's after God's own heart. So I will present to you, I'll introduce to some and present to others my my friend. Who I've learned to love through by way of Pastor Starks and Sister Starks. They brought him in and we shared a great friendship. Uh, Reverend Dr. Ronald Vincent, Pastor of Bethany First Baptist Church. And I know the Lord's going to bless us with a, with, a, with a great message from him. But before he comes, we're going to ask Grace to uh, descend. I think they're going to descend down. Uh, and then we're going to ask his musician, who's here, to come up and render him a, a selection. No? He's not here? Okay, Grace First Baptist Church. They give us one more hand. Let's give a hand for Grace First Baptist Church. And after Grace First Baptist Church, give us one more selection. The next voice you will hear is that of Dr. Ronald Benson. Many of us are, are, are dealing with allergies, so uh, you know, pray for us. It's not not only is it late, but it's also we're dealing with uh, allergies. A lot of us are. So just pray for us as we come.
Good evening. It is my pleasure to be here and give the honor to God and to the pastor of this church, pulpit ministers, and to all assembled. It's a rich presence in this place. And no, it's not because you won the lot. But I sense the presence of the Lord. I'm so glad to see so many friends. It's just good to be in the house of God. I thank God for Pastor Starks and Pastor Ford and the wonderful tradition that has been established here all the way back to Pastor Linwood Russ, my, my uh, student, if you will, my colleague and in seminary. Amen. We were students together in seminary. Amen. Amen. And so we co labored together. So it's just wonderful to see stretch back over the years and look and see how good God has been. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap? Thank this choir for doing such an outstanding job. Always excellent to you. Thank God for the members of Bethany who are with me tonight. Amen. We couldn't bring our choir, but we brought some, as many as we could. Some are sick. And as you heard, Sister Allen State, allergies and different things. Or in the air. Amen. But such as we have, we give to the Lord. Amen. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Just use what you got. Amen. So we're not going to be long tonight. Yes, I did bring my mystery bag. I'm getting noted all over town for my mystery bag. And that's a good way to have it because... When you get sleepy, the mystery is going to come out. You're going to have to wake up. So it's my countermeasure for sleep. Amen. We're going to start with a familiar discourse to Bible readers and encouragement for your soul. So we invite your attention to the Gospel of Luke. Turn in your Bibles to Luke. We'll go to Luke chapter 22. Commence reading at verse number 31. Luke 22 and 31. You have it? You can say amen. amen. These are the words of our text as the Lord spake. And it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sip you as sweet. But I prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I want to speak from the subject, fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith. Father, we thank you for thy word, and for the efficacy and power and pathos of that word, that it might cut deep into our hearts, and Lord, not just to cut, but to, Lord, deposit the truths of your excellency, that without faith, it is totally impossible to please you. But with faith, all things are possible. Bless and anoint now this word, let the self in me be seated, that your word may have his ministry in this place. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Here is a great moment when we look into what is known as the spiritual world because Christ gives a report about it. That we are not just in one world temporally, but we are impacted by the things that are unseen in a spirit world. And amidst the joy that was in the 22nd chapter when the Lord established and observed the Passover, and then the Lord's Supper, and all of these things, and then he quieted the strife that was among the disciples, he turns to Peter, who is representative of all the disciples, and has a personal prophecy and word for it. And that's the beauty of the gospel. No matter how it comes out, it will hit many ways. No matter who God is talking to, something about it is truthful unto you. And so the Lord would speak not just to Peter, for he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. And we know from the Greek that that you is plural. Now that changes the dynamics of it. It's not just Peter. Peter's representative of the group. But all of them were targeted by Satan. That takes a whole complexion. Now he says, Satan not only desires you, Peter, he desires all of you disciples that he may sift you as we. And so therein, Peter comes up with the whole remedy he has for the solution to it. And Peter says, oh, I'll never betray you, Lord. I'll never do it. You know how many times do we rely on our own strength? But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. So the Lord gives the prophecy, Peter, Satan has desired to have you, but I prayed for you. And the difference, my brothers and sisters, in, in our faults and failings and weaknesses is that even though we fall, we can get back up. There's hope tonight, there's encouragement tonight, there are things that you and I have left done unfinished in 2014. But God is gracious and merciful. And even in the midst of our failures and our setbacks, God is able to do a great work. And so then this prophecy tells Peter, Peter, Satan wants you. This gives us to know Satan has put a target on our back. The disappointment, the difficulties, the defeats, the diseases, and all of the things Satan has charged over, he will throw every dart at us. And so in that spiritual world, Satan can do nothing against the children of God except he get permission from God. Now that Aaron is an interesting dilemma because how is it God would give Satan permission to, let me put it in the vernacular of the day, to mess with us? Is that what we say? Why well, are you messing with me? And we, we get indignant, we do like that, is that right? And so God is, 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 is over this thing and even in the midst of it, sometimes he takes us through the storms to perfect our faith. And he takes us to the storm to correct our perspective. And Peter had a bad perspective. He, he did not want to hear what the Lord was saying. Satan desired to have you that he may sift you as we and all the disciples with you. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. What is all this about? That God in his infinite glory and majesty would allow Satan to come against one of his children? And yes, that would be the case. Because God would perfect your faith and test you and bring you to another level. Even what the devil meant for evil, let me shift the gears. God meant for good. And that's a shifting in your life that's going to happen because even though the devil may come against you, God says, I'm more than the world against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have some difficulties, and this was a difficult uh, passage to get. It holds up, but I love it because it gives you the vision that Satan is going up just like he did in the Job's day to get permission 
to attack. He has power, and he has a lot of power. And if you look at the devil, he waits till you have your happiest moments to bring the tear-filled sadness to your life. He waits until everything is going good to pull the rug out from under you. He gives you friends and some of them stab you in the back. He gets things all topsy-turvy just so he can let you know he is prince and of the powers of the air and the principalities in high places. What did he do to Job? He took Job and said, Oh, skin for skin, just let's jump, sir, Job, sir, thee for naught. Take away all that he has, and he'll curse you to his face. And so that was the, 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 the bet was on. And Job took all, the devil took Job's wealth, then he took his health, and he took his children, and he took everything. He was over even uh, the calamity of the atmosphere, for he sent a great wind. And blew the tent down. Yeah, uh -huh. Some of these things that are happening in our world today are not just global warming, but it's the devil's movement as he intensifies his efforts against the children of God. Mm -hmm. And so we see the devil has power, but thanks be God has all power. Yeah. Uh, the devil may think he's mighty, but there is somebody who's almighty. Yeah. And the Lord says, but I have prayed for you. Yeah. Satan wants you, he knows you, he has a target on your back, and he's just waiting to sift you as he would sift the chaff from the wheat. In other words, I'm going to separate you, Peter, is what the devil is saying, from your faith. And when I separate you from your faith, you'll be no more good for God. Do you know that's what the devil wants with you right now? He wants to separate you from your faith. All the good that you've been doing, the devil doesn't like it when you do good. But if the devil is mad, God is great. And the devil wants to take you and sift you and make your ministry bad, make your witness bad, make you don't want to go to church, make you want to fight when you get to church, make you want to not listen to the message, but run over somebody in the parking lot on the way out of grace first time. Devil is there to target you. And therefore the Lord says, brother, I have prayed for you. That disjunctive conjunction saying, but I, I'm going to separate the thought now. But I have prayed for you. Uh -huh. And that prayer is Jesus has never, and never been denied a prayer. I'm answering the prayer. Jesus who is the word of God. Jesus who is the pathos. Jesus who is the, the word conceived. The word revealed. The word spoken. The word incarnate. That word prayed for Peter and the disciples. And that would strengthen Peter when his own faith would, or his own uh, ingenuity would run out. And that's the way we are sometimes. We want to take our ingenuity. Lord, I can take care of it. Lord, I can handle it. You don't need to do anything. Just sit on the bus and be quiet, Lord. I can do the drive. And then when we get in a, a cul-de-sac, we'll get to a dead end. When we get to detours, we have to call on the Lord. How am I going to get out of this, Lord? The Lord said, back up. I told you not to go down this road the first time. <laughs> we are so full of ourselves. Yeah. And I believe the devil and that the creation saw everything that went in to man. And as he was standing around looking, I believe God scooped up the clay and then he shaped man in his image. Then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the devil said, I know why, I, why, where I will attack man from. Where? From his ability to make choices. And therefore we make bad choices. Anybody made bad choices in here before? Now don't tell me you're sitting next to your bad choice. I don't know. <laughs> That's not fair. You're in church now. But we've all made bad choices. You see, the Lord has given us independent ability to be free moral agents. That's why you can say, I'm grown. I can do what I want. And the devil loves it when you say that. Because when you say that, you're separating yourself from God. You say, I know what's better for me than anything else. And this is what Peter was saying. Lord, I will never deny you. I'm ready to go to prison with you. Why, even I'll die for you. And how many times we say that, and then we hear the consequences of our decisions, and say, well, you know, I'm not ready now. <laughs> kind of like church. Uh, when you're ready to tip out of church, you put up and go tipping out. Is that right? 
How would you like to be in a foxhole with that guy? You ready to have a fight and let Eddie go tipping out? That's what Peter was doing. Peter was not going to follow Jesus. Peter didn't know his own part, so he spoke his, his emotion. And when he, many times we're full of emotion and we can't get our handle on who we are in spiritually. We know who we are intellectually, we know who we are educationally, but we don't know who we are spiritually. We're babes. And we think we got more faith than we have. And so the question came down to Peter, Peter, the night won't be over before you will deny me thrice. You're going to deny me and you will deny me that you ever knew me. How does that make you feel when you deny your faith? Nobody's ever preached on that too much because nobody won't admit to it. But there are times when you went along to have the margarita and daiquiri. Somebody's getting thirsty right now. <laughs> there are times when you went out when you shouldn't have gone. There are times you listen to dirty jokes when a Christian had no business listening. Am I coming down to a pew near you? <laughs> All of these things happen and they show us how weak we are. And so Peter would say, Lord, though, though they take me to prison and give me, I'll never deny it. And he said, all right, we'll see. And then the Sanhedrin, the Praetorian prison guards came up and they took Jesus. And they began to take him to Caiaphas' house. Begin to spite him. All of those things. And the Bible said he to follow from afar. He didn't want to follow too close. The rest of the disciples scattered. Because they didn't want to be identified. Peter followed from the afar, and then he went by a fire to warm himself. He chose to go by a fire that the world had made to warm himself. Isn't that our mistake too many times going to the wrong fire? Going to the wrong crowd. And the lady said, Thou art a Galilean. And he said, No, I'm not from the east side of Nazareth. Huh? No, I ain't. Huh? He said, But thy speech betrayed thee. Then another one came, another man came and said, Thou art a Galilean. All of these came and spoke to him and said, You're a Galilean, for I saw you in the crowd. And then the Bible said, He swore, meaning he cursed. He used some of the words you used in 2014 on the freeway. <laughs> he used some of those words you used in the kitchen when it, you burned yourself. Huh? Come on, man. You, I know you dressed up now. But he used some of them words when somebody cut you off in traffic. Huh? And he cursed and he said, No, I'm not a girl. I don't know the man. And the Bible says the cop. And then Jesus looked at him and got eye contact with him. And when he got eye contact with him, he realized what Jesus said was true and what he said had fallen to the ground. Because why? He was relying on his own strength. And Jesus had seen into the future. And therefore, what he saw was a deflated ego. What he saw was the fact that he was no good. What he saw was he was worthless. And what he saw, he went out and wept bitterly for him. God told him, Jesus told him, when you convert it, he says, now, I pray that your faith fail you not. Because the real target of the attack will be your faith. The real target of your attack in 2015 will be your faith. It may be a job-like experience. The Lord start taking family members. And you say, why me? Or you start losing money, and money becomes diminished and depleted. And you say, why me? Things can change overnight. We are not in an uh, eternal world. We are in a temporal world. Amen. And if you bake it on something, it can be here today and gone tomorrow. I understand the low gas prices that I couldn't wait to get to the pump to fill up with are uh, uh, running havoc on the investments. I said, keep on going lower now so I can get my gas. Because we don't know how things impact sometimes. We don't know. All we know is we got a hold to God's unchanging hand. Now what was the difference in this whole thing? Because Peter had to go out and weep. And when he wept, the Bible says he wept bitterly. And when he wept bitterly, I believe that was remorse. I believe that was repentance. The Lord spoke of the fact that he would be turned around from this experience. Do you know your failures can turn you around? Do you know your failures can set you off? Do you know your failures you can learn from? And someone said, failures are the back door to success. Peter wept bitterly. And he went out. 
And then on the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, the Bible says he got up. He got up and spoke and preached the gospel. And over 3,000 souls were added to the church. How could they introduce Peter that night? I bet it was a night meeting. Here is Peter, that one who denied Christ, that one who cursed the little maidens out by the fire. Let's give it up for Peter now. He's your evangelist for tonight. Nobody would want to hear that. Because they just emphasized his failures. But I thank God when we fall, we shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord will uphold us with his hand. God isn't through with you because you fail. God isn't through with you because you messed up. God isn't through with you because you didn't get it the first time. He has patience and love and understanding to give it to you. Why? Because it was his word that was praying for Peter. It was the word himself, the infallible, inerrant, life-transforming word that is the dunamis of God. It was the power of packed word. And when the word prays the word, God is the word. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so the word prayed for Peter. Do you know you got to know how to handle that word? Do you know you got to do like Jesus and know the word so you can fight the devil? You're fighting the fight of faith, but you're fighting the fight of faith against the odds of the devil. The difficulties, the doubts, the disease, the sickness, the disappointments, the disparities, all of those things, the discrimination, everything you can think of, the devil is throwing at. But I've got a little message for you that Jesus knows how to fight. It was way back around the fourth chapter of Matthew when Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Did you read that in your Bible? He was led of He was baptized by John the Baptist, but he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. And for there, 40 days, the Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Isn't it amazing we don't fast until we go to the doctor? The doctor said, you got to come fasting. Now that's not a fast. That's a medical fast. That's not a spiritual one. I can't eat nothing after midnight, so you gorge it all down at 9 o'clock. That's not a fast, brothers and sisters. You got to fast. You got to give it up in order to afflict yourself. And when you afflict yourself, God will see that, and God will bless you. Now, there was a rumble in the jungle. That was a thriller, and it wasn't in Manila. That was a fight of all fights. It was good versus evil. It was dark versus might. It was the things and principalities and powers for Jesus who had been there 40 days and 40 nights and afterward he was a hundred and then Satan came. That was a rumble in the jungle. Because the devil came with a supposition. And the supposition was, if thou be the Son of God. Is that what he said? Yeah. Command that these stones be made bread and thou can eat. But Jesus blocked him with a left jab. <laughs> and the left jab blocked uh, Satan. And he said, it is written, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. A left jab is a powerful joke. A left jab can go with a prize fighter faster than a serpent can bite your hand. In other words, a serpent can reach out with a bite 15 feet. But if you use the jab right, you can come with the power of 30 feet. Amen. Jesus jabbed the devil. And the jab was to get some space between him and darkness. That light and darkness can't coexist. So he gave him a left jab. You're going to be fought and run after by the devil. And when the devil gets after you, you got to turn. Give him a left jab. Step into it with the whole body. This isn't no picnic. This isn't for anybody who of a faint heart. You're going to be in warfare and you got to know how to handle the word of God. Amen. 
study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly divided the word two. But the devil doesn't finish on round one. The devil is not a round one fight. So he took Jesus to an exceeding high pinnacle on the temple, and he tempted him. Cast thyself down, for it is written in the ninth verse of the song, that he shall give these angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And Jesus said, It is written, You should not tempt the Lord your God. Do you know what that word did to the devil? Another left jab. Do you know a left jab can come so quick? Muhammad Ali used to have a fast left jab. He said, my left jab is 90 miles an hour. I'll hit you so fast, you won't see it. I'll hit you, and you didn't even see it. You see that? You've got to learn how to use the word of God. What's missing from your arsenal is a little fight. You have gotten so weak, you run out of the Jesus prayed. We have been prayed for. 
If you believe Jesus is the Son of God and rose from the dead on the third day, that's the doctrine of the apostles. And Jesus says, I'm praying for all who will believe on that doctrine. You have been prayed for. You are not going to fail. Even your failures will be turned inside out. And you take those stumbling blocks and make them stepping stones. God wants to do a work with you. And he's given you the power of his word. And when you have the power of his word, you are not left alone. Never alone. Someone said, I've seen the lightning flashing. I felt the, the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still, fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. Grace First Baptist, put them up, get them up, and go after him. Don't wait for him to come to you. Go and take back what he stole from you. you would be victorious. He says, when you converted, go back and strengthen your brother. Peter would win and be champion. And when we all get to glory, Jesus is going to raise our hand because he's the victor and we are the conquerors in him. And we will all be doing our little rocky shove. It would be nothing but a tag team bout, and all you did was tag up uh, with Jesus. Nobody had anything to brag about in heaven. Just the fact that God loves you. Now, the joy I want to bring to the close here is the joy of strengthening your brother. All right? Let me take my little book. I've done enough damage. God wants you to be strengthened. And do you know you come to church to be strengthened? Do you know you worship with your brothers and sisters to be strengthened? Do you know there's such a thing as words that edify, instruct in righteousness, and build up? Do you know in 2015, you've got to practice better encouragement with one another? We are too much the same. How you doing? Oh, I'm just with you. Is that it? No, I have this. Well, listen, if you could wake up and you have hair and you could get a comb through it. Bless. 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 If you could kick up a leg. Bless. But our problem is we just speak too much negative energy, negative feelings. And every time we talk in negative, why do we talk negative? Because a negative thought is 80 times more powerful than a positive one. That's why negative news sells. People don't want to hear what's good. They want to hear what's low down. And if I told you I had something low down to tell you, you'd listen twice as hard. <laughs> Ain't heard nothing I said, but I, I got something low down to tell you. You want to hear that? stuff called the flesh. And you got to wake up every day and have a funeral. you got to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. I want you to be, and this would be my encouragement, my encouragement to everyone. I want you to be more like Jesus. Jesus gave sacrificial love. And sometimes our love is an arrow slide. It's not an agape love. Sometimes our love is a phileo love. I love her because she loves me. And oh, how happy we can be. But if she turns it off, I'm going to show her the bright side of darkness. That's not agape love. And women, when the brothers don't listen, the Bible and the cross is not a tool for assault and battery. <laughs> I know you want to go upside his head. But God said, don't do that. This baby is better used when you kneel before him. Go to church as you may. Study the word and Bible study and prayer. 
But don't take that baby home and say, you're going to go. That's assault. That's family violence. Domestic violence. Use this baby to get yourself right. If you get right, then the world will line up with you. But if you are wrong and you're going after somebody using the cross, it'll never work. You've got to bow before it. Angels bow before it, heaven and earth. No. What a mighty God we serve. Now somebody here today will be wrestling tomorrow. Because the nature of the devil is to make you happy. You'll be happy one day and he come gets in the car with you as you get to the corner of observation. Huh? Drive. You get ready to leave the church. He, he eases in the car with you. Now the song said, don't let the devil ride. Because if you let the devil ride, he's going to want to drive. But some of us are going to the corner opening our door up. So get on in here. I want you to practice as hard as it may be for your nature because you're introverted. Some of you. Some of you can't stop talking. But those who are introverted, I want you to practice saying good things. Saying good things. I know you're mad. I know you want to cut somebody out. I know you want to follow Brother Peter. But be like Jesus. And nowhere did you find sin in Jesus. Now we can't be like that all the time, but most of the time we can try. Say, I can try. I want you to use positive words and learn the meaning of what it means to make someone else feel good. I'm going to close on this little note. It revolutionized my prayer when it's time to have my meals. Dr. Isaro Emoto, he's from Japan, he did a study with rice, water, and salad. He took three flasks and he put them in a row and he put rice in them, each one of them, and then he poured enough water to cover the rice. Watch this. And what he did with the first flask was say positive things to that jar. You know, hear me say, Brother Messi, you're going crazy. Listen to this. It's the story. He spoke positive words, and the rice, if you will, and the water began to ferment and let off a sweet vapor and smell. The second jar, he did nothing to. He said nothing to. He just looked at that job and went on about his business. Have somebody treated you like that lately? It definitely leaves a distinctive feeling. And then he took the third job and spoke negative energy into it. And when he spoke negative energy into it, at the end of a trial period, it was dark, rotted, and it looked like it should be thrown out, moldy. What are you saying? That, that he found out when the positive things were spoken to the, to the water with the, with the good rice in it, he took the water and froze it and saw beautiful crystals, pristine geometrical patterns in the water as if the water heard what was said. He took the song, I have, he took the song Amazing Grace and played music and found out the crystals were pristine and beautiful. He took Dr. King's speech and said, I have a dream. And he played that. And the crystals were beautiful and pristine. Then he took some of that, that hard rock music and played to the other. And you could see the deformity in the crystals. What are you saying, Reverend Benson? Water has properties we don't know about. And we're praying for our food every time. Lord, bless the food. Bless the food. Bless the pork chop. Bless the bacon. Bless the eggs. Bless the pig feet too, Lord. Some candy yams, huh? Bless all of that. Have you spoken to the water? And we are 70% water? And we're on an earth that's 70% water? And you don't think there's more to water than meets the eye? All we've been doing is this guzzling it and drinking it. But water can set you up. Good, blessed water. You don't drink enough of it anyway. Too much Kool Aid. I can look at you and tell you know that. Too much sugar in your way and Kool Aid. God wants to do a work with you. And part of it relates to hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? When the word of God is spoken, there's power in the word. 
when you inherit somebody, I believe that the water in them and the intuitiveness, and I believe the determination will be if you will start fermenting in them and begin to grow and begin to, if you will, uh, perpetuate itself and get in motion. I believe there's power in positive words that are spoken in faith. And Jesus spoke such words to Peter. Peter, I have prayed for you. You have fall, but you're going to get up. When you fall, get converted. When you fall, go strengthen your brothers. How will he strengthen his brothers? By the power of words. We have missed the ministry because we only report the negative. And the devil got us so turned around. We don't even know how to encourage one another. We forgot. And when somebody gets blessed, we don't get happy with them. Put our hands in our pocket, turn our shoes in the way. I should have been mine. Is that us? You don't have to raise your hand here in church. That was marvelous. How do you get marvelous? Two things. Let the word of God live in you richly. For you are living epistles. Living words of God. And God wants to write a work in your life. And you can encourage your brother and sister because when it's your time to be encouraged, nothing can encourage you like somebody who's on your side. I remember as I go to my seat in the Baptist church, you get three times to go to the seat. <laughs> Keep it up with it now. I remember back in May of 2010 when my mother passed away. Oh, we, she had been sick for some time. We kept my mother in my house for 10 years. And we knew all about taking care of your loved one. That, that doesn't come with warning. It just happened one day she had a stroke. It just happened one day she couldn't go back to her home. It just happened that somebody had to take care of her. And when she was well, she said, don't put me in a nursing home. And then when she died, or at least when she was sick, my sister had already passed away. So it says, I trust three boys to take care of mama. You know, boys, they can't do nothing. But we learned to do it. We made up our mind that we were going to take care of mama. And we said, we're going to take care of mama, and I'm not going to let anybody beat me taking care of my mama. That's what you got to do. This is an opportunity. This is not a burden. This is an opportunity. Because if you honor your father and your mother, God says your days will be long upon the face of the earth. The Lord God, that's a promise. I said, I'm going to do this whether I do anything else. If I don't do it, if I die, that's right. I'm going to do it. Took care of my mama. My wife helped me. Brothers helped me. We had caregivers. And we took care of mama, and I got the night shift sometime. After working all day, you got to get the night shift sometime. And I, mama would be howling because the pain would be bad in her legs. And I'd have to get up and go in there and put warm compresses on her feet. And I said, Mama, is that better? She said, oh, that's so much better. And wasn't long before mama went to sleep. And I was left to look at TV in and got some of the greatest messages at midnight. Uh, because I was up, and God showed me how to wipe feet. And wash feet. Well, what happened when Mama died? When Mama died, it was sad, as it would be with anyone. And I sent for my friends, and friends in all walks of life, preachers, attorneys, and I said, "Tell my secretary, tell her my Mama died, and I need, I want to see him." And do you know they had a ministry as they came, just a presence. I don't remember what they said. I remember that they were there. And do you know when you show up with a ministry of presence, God will give you what to say or nothing at all. And you don't have to think of small talk. Just your presence empowers it. And I had to preach my mother's funeral, and I didn't know if I could get through that. Lord, have mercy. How did I preach my mother's funeral when I loved her so? And God says, I'll give you the strength. Just open your mouth and I'll speak for you. It's the power of encouragement. And church, we miss that so many times because we're so busy fixated on what we gonna do. It's not we, but what Christ will do through us if we are there. Let your prayer be in 2015. Lord, I'm available to you. Lord, you can use me in thy service. Lord, I'm gonna stand with you and stand on your promises. You've got to ask God for these things. And you've got to do it more vigorously.
Because the time is at hand and it'll soon be far spent when the Lord will come back for his church. The devil is fighting us on every side, killing, shooting my men who are unarmed. And then sick and demented people shooting the good police that we need. It's both crazy. Somebody said, when I call the police, I want them to come. I don't want them to be dead in a coma. We got to respect our police. And just as we told the district attorney elect at the minister's union when we called Nicholas de la Hood, we want you to know where democracy is. We're not an anarchy nation. We're not a police state. But democracy is somewhere in the middle. And you've got to bring integrity to that job. And we're going to hold you accountable. The world is going mad. We've got a racist that's a minority whip for the Republican Party. David Duke and Klansman. He was a part of the supremacist group and he spoke and, and gave a speech there. And he said, I, don't, I didn't know they were racist. Now who are you going to believe? Him or your lying eyes? The world is going crazy. Mother's taking a gun into Walmart and a two-year-old baby shooting mom. You see how crazy it is? And you don't think these are the last days? And you trying to go to Las Vegas? Excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. Somebody may have known that. Didn't mean no harm. But your dream shouldn't be right here on earth. Your dream should be of a glory land. When you get to heaven, you will leave this body behind. As much as you fixed on it, got your nails done, got your hair fixed. Got your hubcaps and wheel covers shine. I used to watch a brother use a toothpick to get the yellow star. He would go all the way around and get the gold spot of his bow ties. Brothers, we really know how to wash a car. Don't say amen. Yeah. If you can't say amen, say, I'm the man. It's not like amen. Yeah. All right. We know how to do so much. We're going to leave all that behind. And when we get to glory, we're going to transcend into another dimension. We will go from terrestrial to celestial. Eyes that can't hardly see now. New eyes. Huh? Dance steps that get old. You'll be able to dance all the way. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Y'all got the idea. I can't do that. Huh? All that stuff. They have said he got up and danced when that heart came into the, into the town. Is that right? When you get to glory, you know what the shout is going to be about? Let me tell you what the shout is going to be about. All of you and Peter and all the rest of them, we're going to be shouting because we don't deserve to be there. We're going to be shouting because it's too good for us. We're going to be shouting because we didn't do one thing to deserve it. And we're going to be crying because we'll say, I don't deserve her. And the Lord will say, welcome. I paid it all. I paid it all. And I died on the cross. Now go encourage your brothers to be strong. Go encourage your sisters. To be strong. I went to a funeral the other day. The lady was 89 years old, and everywhere she would if she would go, she would ride the bus. She went to visit all the sick in her church on the bus. Some of us won't do that anymore. I don't have any gas. Not a car that needs work on it. This old lady got out and caught the bus and went to every hospital in town. Would she put us to shame? Look how quiet your heart. Will she put us to shame? Now you got to do better. I want you to do better. I want you to do better. We never have a coach that tells us that we won't let our pastor do it too long because we'll say, wait, well, I don't like the sermon. It's holding too long. I want you to do better. As a coach, I'm going to tell you you can do better. I'm going to tell you you can make All-American. I'm going to tell you you can make the Pro Bowl. I'll tell you you can almost make the Cowboys. You need to do better. And it's in you to do better. If you will just fall under the shadow of the cross and say, Lord, my failure is my failure. I confess I've done wrong. But I know you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me of all the right. That's the only way Peter could have gotten up and preached. He let Jesus down. He lied and cursed and said, I don't know the man. But on the day of Pentecost, 
He got up to 3,000 souls. What happened? Then he wrote in the book of Peter, be vigilant. I'm closing. Be sober. Why, Peter? What have you learned? Because the devil, like a roaring lion, goeth about stalking whom he may devour. Peter learned. He learned from his mistake. The devil put a target on your back in 2015. He said, I'm going to get you to separate from your church, separate from your faith, separate from your money, separate from all people that will do you good. And when I isolate you, I'm going to devour you. You got to turn. Give me my gloves one more time. Just one of them. You got to turn. And you got to give him what kind of jab? Huh? You got to give him a left jab. And you got to lean into it. Because the jab puts space between you and the opponent. The, the jab disorients your opponent. And then your jab sets him up for the what? Grace, spikes, jab, 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 pro. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Benson. Thank you. Good fight. Encouragement to come in small things. You know, when Dr. Benson was talking about he had to preach his mother's funeral, it was one of the hardest things that he had to do. I had to do the same thing. And I, and I reminisced. And Reverend Gant said, you know, sometimes it's good to reminisce. And I did. I went back to the encouragement that people gave me when I was there. The church was full, the people was outside, and people came from grace, and they drove, they flew. And that was encouragement, just their presence, just them being there. And you never know what you, your presence or your, your action can do for somebody who's hurting, somebody who's down, somebody who's out. In 2015, we have to grow through grace. But the only way that you can grow through grace if you're not a believer is to come and give your life to Christ. You must be born again. You, that's it. You must be born again. It's the simple message that's been preached and preached and preached. You will never enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Once you're born again, giving your life to Christ, you turn away from sins and He's given you new life. And now you must grow. In order to grow, you must hear the word. Not only you must hear the word, but you must Hide it in your heart, Psalm 119, says, Thy word have it in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Not only hide it in your heart, but we must apply the word in our lives. And so you may be here today, and you haven't received Christ as Lord and Savior. And 2014 is slowly ticking away. And God wants you to be better in 2015. But you can't make yourself better because if you could have, you would have done it in 2014. But Christ paid it all. And all to him we owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but his blood washed it white as snow. So you may be here today and you haven't received Christ as Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity right now in 2015 to make it right. Say, so Lord, I want to turn away from the world and Satan and sin and give my life to you and follow on you have you saved me. Or you may be here and don't have a church home. We want to offer you grace. Or better. Where you can hear the word preached. Where you can hear the word taught. And you can grow in grace. And be an encouragement to somebody else along the way. Because only what you do for the Lord will last. So as Sister Allen prepares to sing and if the Spirit of God has touched your heart. This is your opportunity to come. You can come and accept Christ and say, I want to be baptized to identify with him and all the other believers. Or you can come and say, I already I've accepted Christ, but I don't have a church home and I'm in and out. And now I want to put down these roots and listen to the word of God and bear fruit and pass it on to my children. And they can make a difference in the world for somebody, for God and for others. 
So as you sing, if the Spirit of God has touched your heart, will you please come? There's nothing like being in Christ. And there's nothing like making an impact for Christ. So if you're here, we fall down, but we gather. We fall down.